After a successful tour against India at home, Richards arrived in England in 1976, confident in his ability to dominate any attack. Despite missing the second test with influenza, Richards made 829 runs at an average of more than 118, as the West Indies completed a dominant 3-0 series win. Richards made 1,710 test runs in 1976. In an era of great fast bowlers, he was the batsman the quick men feared most of all. He was in a class by himself, Jeff Richards. I think that um, he could well be termed the, the Muhammad Ali of cricket in the sense that um, he took on everyone. And he didn't just do it by the bat, he said it, he talked. And, you know, his bravado was rubbed off on many of the players that played with him. I was very lucky to be in a team like that and um, just learning from people like Viv. Well, he's the best batsman I ever bowled at. I think that goes uh, without question, really. Um, he had this aura about him, he, he dominated sides, he dominated bowling attacks, he, um, he had a swagger but it was a, a believable swagger, there was no arrogance or uh, no real arrogance to it, he was, he was just uh, an unbelievable presence and certainly the hardest man I've ever had to bowl at in county or test match cricket because you just didn't know where you were going to bowl the ball. Richards has hit five boundaries from nine balls. One of the fiercest competitors really. I think um, I think a lot of opponents approach Viv from the wrong way. I think if you made Viv feel comfortable, you had a better chance. But the moment you confronted him, you're on the losing side. A tremendous batsman and of course a great competitor. Australia's new sensation after Lily and Thompson and those guys was Rodney Hogg had great pace. And Huggy ran up and bowled his bounce at Viv at the MCG. And Viv hooked, was a bit late on the shot and got hit on his jaw. Viv used to bat with chewing gum those days. He used to bat and chew. And, and when he got hit on his jaw, Rodney Hogg is there almost looking at him to say, isn't he going off? Isn't he going off? And Viv didn't go off, of course. And after a few minutes, Viv settled down again. And Huggy thought to himself, hey, this, that didn't send him off. I'll really send him off now. And charged in and bowled his other bouncer at Viv. But obviously, Viv must have been waiting on this bouncer. And although it might have been quicker than the previous one, it went out of the ground. And the MCG is a big ground. And Viv hit it hard and far. In the 1979 World Cup final at Lords, Richards made 138 not out from 157 balls, the first in a long list of match-winning one-day international knocks. I umpired, of course, three World Cup finals that he played in, and the oh, yeah, tremendous one-day cricketer, marvellous. He uh, just changed the game completely. Once he got in, he just changed the game. He, it's, uh, he could, well, he couldn't ball at him. Wherever you ball at, at him, he just oh, he murdered you. Viv's presence, I think, came from the way that he strode to the crease. You know, he, he strode to the crease, and you, if you were sort of silly enough to look at him, you would think, oh, this guy means business. Um, and Viv quite often would, uh, he, he'd stride to the crease, he'd take block, and then he used to sort of have this habit of banging the, 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 the grip on the top of his handle and it was and then he you know very firmly tapped the bat you know everything about him was you know I've come here to get you and uh, you better be at your best otherwise I'm going to get you so that was it, it was an intimidating uh, presence if you if you allowed yourself to be intimidated Viv you know was on top of you straight away there's no contest with that one. That is a big six. Viv Richards, uh, well, he's probably my favourite cricketer in a one-day game at the MCG. We had an attack that included Lily Thompson. I think Jeff Dimmick was playing. Rodney Hogg. Pretty formidable pace attack. And Viv made 150 in this uh, one-day innings. And he just bludgeoned it and smashed it and whacked it to all parts of the, the MCG and you can imagine in a one day game you've basically got the field pretty much spread when he's on strike and he still managed to hit boundary after boundary after boundary and at the time I never thought anyone would bat better than that. In 1981 Test cricket came to Antigua, Richard's home island. He had married three days earlier 
a major event for the island. Anything less than a century now would be an anticlimax. In 1981, Antigua was awarded a test match, the final test of the um, series against England. And Richards actually got married just before that test, and of course that was a very major event on the island. And then he came out in the test match, then came out in the test match, and set about scoring a test century there. And he took much longer than he normally would over a test century, but it was as if he said himself that the whole event wouldn't be complete unless he was able to score 100, which he, he surely did. By 1985, Richards had taken over from Clive Lloyd as West Indian captain. He would lead the team for six years and would never lose a series. I think Bib, when he was growing up as a young man, his father told him, Bib, you might be from a small island, but you're a big man and you're gonna to prove to the world that you are a big man. And Viv went out to the world and proved that. Competitive to the point where if things weren't going right on a cricket field, he would almost lose his cool because he was so competitive. But fortunately for us and the West Indies, we won a lot when Viv was in the team. So he was able to maintain his calm and his cool and just get his job done. But talk about competitive, Viv Richards, highly competitive. Richards led his team to a 5-0 thrashing of England at home in 1986. He finished the series with a century and 56 balls, the fastest ever test century, as measured by the number of balls faced. And he's gone and got that century with a mighty six, down to mid-wicket, typical Vivian Richards stuff. The records kept falling. In a one-day international against New Zealand in 1987, Richards became the only player to make a century and take five wickets in a one-day international. And there is five wickets for Vivian Richards. What a day it's been for the West Indies captain.